Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at logistic regression with PySpark utilizing the customer churn data set. Let's get started. So what we need to work on first is just getting the basic um, understanding of maybe what is customer churn. Customer churn is where a, for example, if you have people coming into your, um, let's say you own a cafe and you have people coming in, what is going to cause them to stop coming in? Why would they, uh, and again, will they stop coming or will they not stop coming? Or for example, if you have people continuously buying your products, okay, um, it's think about it as your brand recognition. Uh, what would cause them to move to another company? Okay, so this comes down to some economic theory about substitutes, complements, that other types of stuff. But let's just stick with um, utilizing logistic regression to predict this. So uh, from pyspark.sql import a Spark session. And then we want to set up Spark. Uh, so let's set up our Spark session. Uh, we'll use the builder. We will also create an app name here. And I'm just going to call it uh, churn. And we get or create. Then we also want to have our data set here. And this is spark.read.csv. Here and we have, um, I think it's customer churn. Let me actually, I'm getting tired of uh, looking at that. So let me do here and yes, it is customer churn. All right, customer churn, we want to also infer our schema to true. We want our header to be true as well. So let's run this to get our data set. And we want to make sure and double check the schema here. Um, because again, this particular data set may have some eccentricities that we need to be careful of. All right, so uh, we have individuals names, we have age, we have uh, their total purchase, we have uh, the account manager, we have years, we have uh, number sites, we have onboard date, we have location, we have company and we have whether they churned or not. Um, and churn will be a binary, so either a one or a zero. One being churned, a zero being not churned. So let's check our descriptive statistics to make sure that everything is a-okay. And we see here that, again, we have a null for the names again because it is a string value here. It's a string. And again, company should be the same way. Um, and again, our onboard date should also be um, an issue as well as well as company names and locations. So in our churn, again, we got a full data set. Um, it's perfect for right now, so we don't need to worry about missing values. Um, so then the next thing, let's uh, grab our column names. And then we're going to actually start uh, getting our data uh, formatted correctly. So uh, from PySpark, uh, dot ml dot feature uh, we want to import the vector assembler and then we're going to actually create our assembler here and we create the vector assembler vector assembler and we have our input columns here and we're going to what are we going to want I'm going to grab this whole thing for now and we will actually just delete what we don't want uh, we don't want name because it is a string. Okay. Um, we, what else? We want total. Uh, we don't, do we want an account manager? What is an account manager? Yes, it, so it is, it is actually a numerical value in here. Um, so we want to keep that. Uh, years is numerical. We want to keep that. Number of sites is good. Now, we will need to take out this onboard date. Okay, um, we could potentially use that later on, maybe make some sort of feature for it. Uh, but again, right now it's gonna be a bit of a hassle. So let's just take out all of these because they are string related. Um, and then we need to also create our output column here, and this is gonna be features. So let's grab our uh, output. And we're going to utilize our assembler to transform our data. And then we need to make sure and have our 
uh, proper final data here and let's do output dot and here we want to actually uh, select out we want features and we want our churn data and here we can take a look so again we have our churn data which is a binary classifier and then we have our feature vectors as well so let's also grab and uh, create a train test split in here so we want our training data we want our test data we want our uh, final data in here and we want a random split in here of 70 and 30 and we're going to seed this at 42 uh, so that again it is reproducible for you guys and then let's go on and fit our uh, logistic regression model so from PySpark uh, dot ml dot classification here we want to import our logistic regression okay and then we also need to instantiate our model so linear reg uh, logistic regression here uh, and let's do logistic regression and we have our label column in here and it's going to be our churn data and then we want to uh, fit our model uh, and so we'll just call this um, LRM for our linear uh, logistic regression model. So we have our LR.fit in here and train. Then we want to double check our uh, summary in here. And so I'm actually going to put this as uh, what? LRM summary. And so we'll do. Um, LRM.summary in here because it is it is just um, uh, an attribute of this uh, particular uh, model set and we can actually look at it here real quick so you can see hill here LRM we grab this and notice that it's just some sort of object and if we grab the summary off of that again it is another object so but I just want I just want to grab and contain this object for now in this LRM summary so that we can uh, look at our we can grab other information from it. So let's do um, uh, LRM summary. And we want to look at the predictions. And so again, I'll, I'll, I can show you what this looks like. And again, I let me see what this actually does when I say show here. See again, it's gonna get, it's not gonna give us anything from this summary attribute by itself. Um, so again, we have our summary in here. We have our features, we have our churn, we have our raw prediction, we have the probability of our proper predictions, and then we have the prediction itself. Um, and we want to actually grab our descript uh, descriptive statistics from this. So let's actually just grab this whole thing here and let's take a look at the uh, description or the descriptive statistics at least. In here and so predictions so we have the mean we have our standard deviation and again everything here is okay now the next part of this is to actually make sure that we evaluate the model correctly so from pyspark.ml.evaluation we want to import the binary classifier uh, evaluator and then we want uh, predictions um, uh, with our labels in here and let's do our what our LRM uh, and we want to evaluate on our test data and so we can take our prediction labels dot predictions here and we can show them whoops uh, predictions predictions and so here we have, again, uh, our, uh, our actual tested data as well. And so notice just, just to show here, there are going to be some differences in there. Okay, so let's actually take this and check our AUC curve. Uh, so we'll do the evaluation itself. Um, and you know what, let me do, um, eval is going to be what? Our binary classifier evaluator. 
we want our raw prediction column here is going to be prediction. Uh, and then we want our label column in here to be churn. And then we'll actually calculate up our AUC here, and this will be our eval.evaluate. And we want this on our uh, prediction and labels uh, dot predictions. And we can actually take and check our AUC. So kind of a, a question on this is uh, what is a good AUC value? Okay, and that's, that's, that's just going to depend on um, a couple different things here and let me let me actually pull up something really quickly so for AUCs there's not really there's not really exactly any magical cutoff number um, for whether something is uh, good or not again our goal is higher is obviously better because again when we have our AUC curve um, again let me I can actually draw something out a little bit here let me see I want this. Let me grab this. And so when we have when we have an AUC curve, again we have our kind of our actual, and the goal is that we kind of fill up this whole area here. Okay. So again, the closer to one it is, is very good. Okay. So um, again, so like if if in this instance um, we want to successfully uh, evaluate whether someone is going to churn or not. Uh, we want again maybe with an AUC here we have like of this 75 is is decent okay um, and it is because again it's it is distinguishable other than from random chance okay random chance would be something like 0.5 okay um, now it would be impressive though if for example we could get maybe a higher number than this uh, so for example like uh, 0.95 or something like that. We're kind of we're ninety five percent sure that something's actually going to occur. Um, so again, you want you, again you want this to be above this point five, but otherwise, again, this particular model we would probably want to play with it a little bit more. Um, so we can also maybe check something. Um, let's actually grab a new data set in here to see how it would work on some brand new customers. So the way that we're actually looking at this, another way is um, since we're bringing in a new set of data, this is very close to before we used this test set, um, a training and test set, and now technically this is a validation set. So this is exactly what would happen kind of in the real world. Whenever you uh, have new customer data, you want to check it on this new unseen data set. So um, let's say, uh, uh, We'll create a new customer uh, data set here. Uh, do spark.read.csv, and we want uh, new customers.csv, and we want to infer our schema to be true. We want our header to be true as well. And so then we have, let's call this our um, final model in here, and this will be. Um, we want to actually run this on our full data set that we had before. We've done the training and the test data. So, but let's run it on the full data. So we have our LRM. We want to fit on our data final. And then we're going to actually, so this is, oh, whoops. Why did it want to, why did it do that? Hold on. Okay, so I was being a bit of a bonehead. Um, this is not this model. This is actually the other model that we ran. We actually just want the LR to run our final model on our full data set. And then let's uh, let's check here on our uh, on our model really quickly. So let me pull up my notes for down here. Um, so we've we've actually ran everything on the full data set. Now let's also double check our uh, new. We haven't actually checked our customer data. Our customer data, and we want to print the schema here. Uh, so again, we see that it's exactly in the same format that we had before. So then we should. Again, this is why we create functions for everything. Uh, we can go on and use our assembler. So we'll say. Um, uh, 
uh, customers validate or valid, let's just say. Um, so we can use reuse our assembler since it's in the exact same uh, format as before and we use our customer data. And then we can also uh, run run our model itself okay uh, so again let's let's t take a look and see what this looks like uh, dot print schema so again you can see here now we do have our features vector okay and so then we also have it's everything is actually in what we want it to now notice though we don't have any churn data in here because this is a new set and we're actually going to be, pr uh, we don't have any of that information. So this is kind of a blind data set. We're double checking, we're validating our data on real world data. So um, let's create a results. Then we have our, oh, what did I save that as? Our final model, final model here and we want dot transform here on our, uh, customer validation data, run that, and then let's check our results, results.select here, and we do uh, what we want, let's do company, and we want prediction, dot show, and why are you, uh, is it prediction, eh. hold on real quick, let me see what, what happened again. We're going to try that again here real quick. I don't know what happened. So res dot select, and then we want here, we want company and we want our prediction. Okay. That actually ran that time. And so then let's do show. So here we can see based on our predictions, um, for these companies, these four companies here, are going to churn uh, and then these two uh, would not churn so uh, again we can so then for example you can maybe uh, take and you can assign account managers to these places to make sure that they may be um, this is again we're predicting that they will leave in the future they will churn in the future so then you can actually say hey to the account managers you need to pay special attention to these guys figure out what's wrong and make sure that they don't leave Thank you guys for watching. If you like this, please comment, subscribe, and I'll uh, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.